In today's video, I'm really excited to show you the new Meta SDK avatars that is provided by Oculus and also works with Unity. So I'm gonna be walking you through how to set it up from the very beginning. We're going to be looking at what you need to do in Unity to integrate it into Unity, what do you need to do in the dashboard.oculus.com to be able to enable some of the features that you're going to be required to do before you can use the SDK. And I'm also gonna walk you through some of the scenes that are available in the SDK so that you get an idea of how to implement it in your own application. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right guys, so what I have right now, it's a scene that it's available in the Meta Avatars SDK. This has one of the avatars that they provide. They also have a lot of different ones that we can check out. But the goal for today is to walk you through some of the requirements, what you're gonna need in order for you to start implementing the Meta Avatars SDK, which I am really impressed with. And I'm gonna show you some of the scenes that are available in the demo. So the first things that you need to do is, I wanna make sure that you have Unity 2020 LTS. I'm using 2020.321 F1, and this is the main requirement to be able to use the SDK. Then the next thing that we need to do is you need to make sure that we create an application app. If you go into Oculus and we look at platform edit settings, you're gonna see that I have an application ID in here, but you're gonna need to get that. So in addition to, to getting that, we also need to get the Oculus integration and I give you a video, many videos on how to do that and I'm gonna link them in the description of this video. But just to show you what you need, once you download Unity, you're gonna go into package manager and then make sure you go into the, you can go into the My Assets, which is basically where you'll download the Oculus integration. I feel like I've done this so many times that I feel like I am repeating everything, but if you haven't done it, I think it'll be really important for you to understand it. So once you search for Oculus integration, you're gonna download that, and that's what's gonna give you this folder that I have in here. So the next part of this, you're also going to need to download the, basically what's called the, the Avatars 2. When I was looking at this in the Oculus documentation, I'm like Avatar 2, and they might be referring to a new version of the Avatar, and that's what it is. If you're basically you know, familiar with their Avatar implementation, which is not the Meta Avatars implementation, that's going to be the one that comes with the Oculus integration. But if you want to use a new implementation, which they're calling the Meta Avatars SDK, that's going to go to this folder. And there's two ways that you can download that. You can open the Oculus Developer Hub and download it from here by going into Downloads, then going into Other Packages, and you're gonna see here Meta Avatars SDK. So that's one way. The other way that I also found very helpful, which is the, the way that I got it I got it to work. I couldn't get it to work with the Oculus Developer Hub for some reason, and but I went into this link right here, which I'm also going to be putting in the link of this description. And once you hit download, you're basically gonna get a Unity package, which is going to look similar to what I have right now. If I go to downloads, you're gonna get this, you double click on it, and then basically just import that into Unity. And it's gonna give you this folder with a lot of different examples, which I'm going to I'm basically going to be walking you through. So I'm just gonna hit play to stop it. So the next thing that you need to do before we dive into Unity is you're gonna have to create this, right? You need to get this ID and you also need to get the necessary permissions to be able to pull this avatar from the Oculus portal because there's a lot of things in here that you're not gonna be able to do without setting up an application in dashboard.oculus.com. So, we're gonna go to developer.oculus.com, which is what that link is going to take me to. And I already created a Meta Avatars app, but this is what you'll need to do if you needed to do it from scratch. You can do, let's say that this is going to be our Meta Avatars 2. And we're going to be developing a Quest App Lab application. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit create. And when I was looking at the instructions, I'm like, well, do I need to do, do I need to submit this before I use the avatars? It wasn't really clear, so I ended up just doing it and trying it. And you don't need to submit the application in order for you to get approval for this. This is actually going to be approved automatically by the system. You obviously, if you want to deploy it to, to App Lab, that's going to go through a review process for what I'm about to show you today. You don't need to get approval. You're just gonna get approval automatically. And then we're just gonna enable user IDs because it's going to use that part of the API to get that information and I'm gonna say here use, we can say use for testing. 
and then just copy that because I'm going to paste that in other things at the request. And I'm also going to do the same thing for user profile. We're going to need this as well. We're going to use it for avatars. I'm going to paste the same thing here. I'm going to click on check and I'm going to hit add to request. And then obviously the third one is going to be avatars because that's where we're doing a video on And I'm also going to say use for avatars, paste this, and then check that box, add to request. And this is a part that I thought, well, do we need to submit this to App Lab before I can use it? And you don't have to do it. You can just do submit request. It's going to tell you here that you, you're basically requesting these different features. And then in here, you can just put in, you know, anything that you like, that, I guess something that you own or something that you want to send traffic to. In my case, I just put DilmerGames.com and then, yeah, I certify with compliance. We're just going to be testing this, so there's really nothing to, to worry about. And you can submit this for recertification if you wanted to change a couple of things in here. You can do that, but that's basically everything that we need to do. And then I just copy that ID that got generated by creating the application and then paste it in here. And in fact, I can just replace it with the one that I just have. And I'm gonna be able to do everything that we, you know, that we that is going to allow us to use the avatar. So once we get the, you know, the Oculus integration in here, added also the SDK for Meta avatars, and then also adding, you know, the, the app ID that we're going to be using. If you haven't watched my videos on setting up, you know, how to set up an Oculus Quest 2 for development, I'm just going to walk you through a couple of things really quick, just in case you haven't watched it. Make sure you set this to Android. Then obviously you're going to have a scene that you're going to have to enable. We will enable this as we look at some of the scenes. And then once you change it to Android, go into player settings. And I'm gonna do this really quickly because I'm assuming that you already watched those videos, but just make sure that you change the color space. It's gonna be linear. And you're also going to, I'm using pass-through in here. So I'm using IL2CPP. If you're not using pass-through, this can be just mono, but in my case, I'm using that. And then I also set it to that net for that X. And I'm using the ARM64 architecture. So make sure that you set those two and the API level for Android, the minimum API level is gonna be the API level 23, which is Marshmallow. And then the last thing that you need to do as well is you're gonna install the XR, XR plugin management. If you haven't installed it, you won't see this. You'll see something that says like install XR plugin management. Once you install it, you're gonna get what I'm looking at right now. Just make sure you have Oculus under Android enable. And then if you go under PC, make sure you have that enabled because I wanna be able to use Oculus Link features because I'm connecting my Oculus Quest to my computer via USB-C. So I wanna be able to run the scenes I'm about to show you. So make sure you have that enabled for desktop. And then once you have that, I think you should be ready to go with everything that you need. The other thing that I have enabled, I also went into tools, OpenXR, and I'm using the OpenXR backend. So in my case, I needed it because of pass-through, but if you don't, if you just want to use the avatars, I think you should be okay by leaving it as default. If it doesn't work, make sure you go back in here and then just, you know, set it to the OpenXR backend. So that's basically everything as far as like the setup. The, the next thing that I want to show you is a couple of different features that they provide. So first things first, if you want to implement this from scratch, there's a couple examples in here that they that I was looking at that they refer to in the documentation. So if you go to examples, commons, scripts, then you're gonna see a lot of different examples in here that are actually used in many of the scenes. The one that I want you to look at is going to be the OVR platform in it. This is gonna walk you through how you can initialize, you know, the OVR platform to be able to get the avatars and communicate with the API. So you're gonna see here that it says initialize, basically you have to initialize the core and then on complete, you're gonna get a callback. And then once you go through these, you're also gonna check the entitlements. Once you get the entitlements, if you didn't get any errors, we're gonna get an access token and you're gonna need an access token to be able to use the Meta Avatars SDK. And then once you get an access token, then this is basically gonna go through other, you know, other process in here that is gonna be required. So just know that this is going to be needed for in order for you to use the Meta Avatars SDK. I haven't spent a lot of time on it, so I'm not, really, really familiar with these just yet, but I will be on the next videos as I learn more about this process. And there's also one that shows you how to set up a, a sample avatar entity and they provide this idea of a path. They, I think they have like a zip file or something like that that will provide you with different avatars. I'll show you in some of the examples here how you can change the, if you change this ID, you're gonna get a different avatar. I don't know why they call it path. It might be referring to a path where the asset is, 
which it makes sense because this is a list of assets, but basically by changing this ID, you're gonna get a different avatar. So I'll just show you that as well. So different examples in here. I'm gonna look at some of the scenes and focus on, on them. So they have different examples for, you know, lighting scene. In this case, they have what's called a corner box, which is, you know, this is very common to, you know, to test lighting, you have green, white, and red. And this scene here will let you with a bunch of different avatars that you can play with. So let me go ahead and test it by using my Oculus Quest 2. Okay, so I got my Oculus Quest 2 connected and I'm looking at the scene and you guys can see some of the avatars. There's a lot of different styles of, you know, different type of people. You got, you know, guys, girls, people wearing glasses, long hair that you can, that you can use for when you're implementing something like this. But you know, if you want to look at more on how lighting affects the avatars, you can look at this scene. The other one is a custom hand pose example. Let me look at this. This one is cool because it shows you how you can have a custom hand skeleton. In this case, the girl is basically doing thumbs up. So it just shows you how she, you know, how it looks like when she's doing a thumbs up. And you can see kind of like the skeleton in here as well. And if you look at this, let me go ahead and hit play to stop it. You're gonna see that I have a skeleton for the left hand and also for the right hand. And if we get closer in here, there we go. You can see the skeleton. They also have the sample avatar, which we're gonna see in many other scenes. And also I think in here you can designate which avatar to show. So if I wanted to change this to maybe avatar number four, which I don't know which one it is, but it's going to basically load a different avatar. You're gonna see that now we have a different pose on this other person. And you can see that this person is blinking, her mouth, you know, expressions are changing. And we also have, you know, she doing a thumbs up. Okay, so let me hit play and let's look at a different one. This one is a different example for the Facebook Connect lighting. I think this looks like one of the scenes that they show at Facebook Connect. So if I hit play, you're gonna see that we are now getting more detail, you know, detailed scenes. So let me get in and show you how these avatars look like. So I'm gonna get closer so we can see some of the lighting on the avatar and how it affects it. So we have a person, you know, kind of wearing like a Hawaiian shirt. Here's a lady also blinking. And we have, you know, different lighting in this scene, Facebook Connect logo on the back. So here's another example where you can, you know, look at how lighting affects the avatars. Let's go ahead and take a look at gazing. Gazing is cool because it shows, this demo shows how the avatars can focus on different, you know, different objects so the gaze actually changes. So if we get closer in here, we're gonna see some of them looking at a box and then looking around the box. Like this girl right here, right? She is looking at the box, the cube that is, you know, going around. Then this one has an offset on the cube, so she's looking on the side. And then this one has just a box going up and down, which is kind of looking up a little bit and then down. So just different gaze examples that you can use with the avatars. So the next example, I think it's one of the coolest because we're gonna start to look at, okay, how does the avatar, you know, affects what we, what we do with the controllers. So in this case, it's going, to, it's going to be mirroring what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the headset on. And now we have this guy here that has a hat and I picked this guy because I like wearing hats. So I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, stretch my arms and then, I don't know, do some kind of dancing and then see how the avatar looks like. I can also move my controllers and you can see that also the fingers. So I'm basically touching the trigger buttons and then my thumb, basically my thumb stick, it's also, you know, reacting. So the trigger, this is when it's for the trigger. And then you're gonna see, so we have full control of the avatar hands. I can also rotate it, can also move my arms up and down, I can look up and down, and then my body as well, so if I were to change it, it is following my, basically what I'm doing, so, so pretty cool stuff, let me look at another one here, there's also an example of a network look back example, and this one is basically if you want to implement networking capabilities, which I'm going to be doing in the future videos, is I'm going to try and see if we can implement the netcode for game objects just to just to make sure that we can incorporate networking with this scene so let me see why okay let me try let me try that again make sure that i am still connected and it looks like i am still connected 
but let me hit play and see and make sure that this scene also works. And there we go. So for some, for, for some reason, oh, there we go. So we, I was gonna say for some reason, this one is not loading, but it is loading. So I think this one is just a mock-up of, uh, of an avatar in front of me. And they provide this scene if you want to, if you want to try to implement networking. I think that's what this one is for, but I'm gonna be looking into more. But I know that they implement, they have the avatar system in a way that you can implement your own networking into the basically the life cycle of their avatar creation. And then the last one is another one where you know they have more complex lighting. So if we go into it, we are kind of like in a theater and I can get closer in here. We have different type of avatars running asynchronously or lo loading asynchronously. We can go back and then look around. Let me go ahead and... But anyways, this is another scene that you can use to, to test different avatars. So this is everything that you need to do to basically get this scene running and the avatars SDK, the meta avatars SDK, up and running. If you have any questions about this or you have you you know you have some feedback as what you saw today, make sure that you let me know in the comments. And also, I'm going to be putting this in GitHub, so just make sure that you look for the project name is going to be Oculus Meta Avatars with Unity, so you guys can download it. And basically, it's going to have everything that you need in order for you to to start testing avatars with the Oculus Quest 2. So that's everything for today. Thank you very much, guys.